Welcome back with a smiling face. Links to previous episodes are given in the video description, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. Whispers of Betrayal Episode 6 The doctor will be up to check on you and see how you are progressing. Thank you. Macy signed and accepted back her passport and ID as Victoria pushed her past the counter. Paul hurried ahead a few paces and suddenly raised his phone to snap a picture. What? Macy blushed. What are you doing? The photographer is really asking that question. Victoria asked. You're the one who insisted on capturing everything on film. What about that photo album you're making at home? What good is it without a complete record? Okay. Fine. Just no close-ups. I'm not even wearing concealer. And you don't need it. You are beautiful just the way you are, Victoria laughed. The nurse led them to the maternity floor and the private room set aside for her. Though Macy initially insisted on impartial treatment Augustus was not so hesitant to demand the best care and the hospital was more than happy to meet his demands. She relaxed on the bed in the hospital gown the nurse helped her into. Her legs were covering in a comfortable blanket. Despite the large window she didn't feel the least bit of a chill. Macy's gaze took in the rather plain though soothing colored walls and the comforting beep of the machine monitoring her. The doctor had come and gone. She was only dilated three centimeters so she had quite some time to kill before the show really began. Apparently there really hadn't been any need for panic. In any case she was admitted without incident so she only had to wait. Macy winced as she felt another contraction. For right now she wasn't in much pain. Still she was glad to have gone in too soon rather than too late. Births involving multiples tended to be more unpredictable with a greater chance for complications. She let her eyes wander around the room as she relaxed. Macy jerked awake blinking as her gaze landed on her attending nurse, excusez-moi mademoiselle. Macy smiled watching as the nurse continued her rounds wondering when she had fallen asleep. You've been out an hour or so, Victoria answered her unasked question. Don't worry I've been keeping an eye on them. Thanks, Macy chuckled. A smile briefly crossed her face before her expression suddenly fell. Paul said he was going to grab a bite to eat and come back since this is likely to take a while. Right. Macy? Something wrong? Macy, why are you crying? Macy bit her lip feeling the tear trickled down her cheek. Victoria immediately left her chair and came to sit on the edge of the bed. Using a tissue she quietly dried her tears looking as tender as a mother. Macy? You can tell me. Didn't we say we will tell each other everything? I just, it's just, this isn't how I imagined this would be. It wasn't supposed to be like this, I know, sweetie. You weren't supposed to be doing this alone, Victoria gave her a knowing smile. Julius was supposed to be here with you. Right. Macy forced a breath as she fought more tears from falling. He was supposed to be here but, it was all a mistake. I'm here and he's somewhere with someone else and, SHH. SHH. Victoria hugged her and let her cry. It will be okay. I promise you it wasn't a mistake. Love is never a mistake even if it doesn't work out. Once you are holding your babies it will all make sense. I promise. Macy's shoulders shook as she struggled against the sudden melancholy assailing her. She always dreamed of being a mother but that dream always starred Julius holding her hand. But it was Victoria who accompanied her to her Lama's classes, helped her prep the baby's room, buy all the necessities, even debated possible names. Victoria, not Julius, was the rock that supported her and kept her moving. Suddenly she began shaking with laughter. What is it now? Victoria chuckled. 
If you're not careful people are going to think you are hysterical. I was just remembering the first day of Lama's class. Do you remember? I was nervous about going alone so you agreed to go with me. We met that really nice couple, and they thought we were lovers. Victoria joined her laughter. They wanted to know if we suffered any difficulties preparing for the babies because we were unconventional. The look on your face was priceless. I thought you were going to burst. Not as priceless as the look on their faces when we explained we were just friends. You know, I don't think they ever really bought it though. Well that is hardly our fault. We tried to explain. The pair laughed a while longer before Macy felt her calm returned. Victoria gave her a gentle squeeze. Feel better. A little. I'm glad you're here, Vicky. Of course. I am here for you always. Now lie down and rest. Sleep some more. The doctors said we are in for a wait so no need to stay up for it. I'm sure you'll know before any of us when it is time. I suppose you are right. Macy said and though she didn't mean to slipped back into a restless sleep. Victoria moved back to the chair and watched Macy nap. Without a word she took out her phone and perused the news. Though she had little interest in America the headlines she scrolled through were all from there. It was not the country that interested her rather it was a person. Even typing in his name did not bring much up in the search. If Julius Dallaire was in a new relationship, he was being rather quiet about it. The only thing she found was a short blurb about a drinking binge but the pictures showed him on his own. In fact, if she looked closely at the picture it seemed as if he was still wearing his wedding ring. Unless he married immediately after Macy left then the band he wore had to be the one from their wedding. If he was so happy to let her go why would he still wear his wedding ring? Macy? Oh she's asleep. The male voice roused Victoria from her own nap. Looking up she saw a rather elderly gentleman shadowed by another at the door. It took her a moment but she eventually recognized Stephen, which meant the other was Macy's infamous father-in-law. Without a word of explanation the gentleman entered and immediately walked to the bed. Victoria shifted ready to protest but held herself in check as the man gently patted Macy's head and smoothed her hair as he fondly gazed at her. How long has it been since the doctor was here, the man asked without looking up. When Victoria didn't answer he glanced at her. How long? Fifteen minutes. She's still only at about six centimeters, Victoria said. The man glanced at his watch and sighed. At least he hadn't missed it. Patting Macy's hand he moved to another chair and sat down waving off his assistant who quietly went to a corner until needed. So you're the father-in-law. Victoria said easing back into her seat observing him. Augustus Dallaire. Macy told her enough about him for Victoria to understand he was a ruthless businessman used to getting his own way. Age had been kind to him. He was a dignified-looking individual. That combined with his vast riches would ensure him several women if he had any interest. Yet according to Macy he hadn't even tried dating since the passing of his wife. And you are Victoria Laron, he looked at her. You know me. I hired you so I should know you. Augustus nodded. And what do you know? You are 23 and on your second year of college. You have been employed as an au pair, model, secretary, and a waitress. You are currently attending college with the goal of being a designer. You have had some minor success in a local completion for amateur designs. Of your last five serious relationships lasting more than three months, two have been with men, three have been with women, stop. Okay just stop, Victoria glared at him. So, you know who I am. Naturally, I would not let just anyone close to my daughter. Daughter-in-law. And technically she isn't even that. Macy has been and always will be my dearest daughter. 
Then why did you son break her heart? Augustus sighed. His brow furrowed as he said, because my son is an idiot. That was not the answer she was expecting. Was it not customary for fathers to defend their sons no matter what? And now he's paying the price, as well his liver. Yet I saw a few headlines about his drinking binges. Have you? Augustus gave her a measured look. He's been looking for her ever since she left him. He has. He's even marshaled our IT department to try and track her movements on cameras. Isn't that illegal? It's a grey area, Augustus shrugged. They are public cameras after all. Victoria raised an eyebrow at that. He's been canvassing hospitals, particularly ones with maternity wards. Macy said she didn't tell him. Augustus shook his head, he hasn't mentioned it to me or his brother so I'm not sure how he figured it out but it's making him even more desperate to find her. Why wouldn't he tell you? It would make more sense to try to get you to help him. I'll be the first to admit my boy isn't the brightest but he has an amazing sense of self-preservation. He knows exactly how I would react if I learned about this after the fact. Augustus shook his head. It remains to be seen if he can learn his lesson and win her back. Excuse me, win her back. Victoria repeated. You don't mean Macy. I do. You want her to crawl back to the man who broke her heart. Victoria suddenly leapt to her feet. No Augustus snapped. I want her to strut down the street with her head held high in front of a gallery bulging with her artwork proving him the idiot that he is. The only one who should be crawling is him. Victoria stood mouth agape. Again, that wasn't the answer she expected. Was that how a father was supposed to talk about his son? I only hope Macy's heart is magnanimous enough to give him another chance. And if it isn't? Then my son has truly lost the greatest of treasures. Not only a wonderful woman but two children who may never know him. Well, I guess I can't disagree with you there. So what exactly are you planning? I wouldn't call it a plan exactly. Augustus sighed. Macy needs room to grow and spread her wings. And my son needs to learn to crawl for a while though it certainly isn't pretty to watch. And what do you want me to do? Just continue as you are. Help Macy fly. The rest will have to be up to them. Victoria leaned back in her chair. She could hardly argue. Yet somehow it just didn't seem right to her. The man in front of her was definitely living up to his ruthless reputation. He didn't even spare his own children and yet... He was acting quite tender to Macy only moments ago. Victoria wasn't quite sure what to make of this man and she was definitely going to keep a close eye on him. 38. Girl Talk Macy slammed the door with little thought to the two-year-olds already tucked in their beds. She was frustrated and more than a little hurt. Were all men pigs or was she being overly sensitive? Sounds like the date didn't go well. Victoria asked from the kitchen. Macy sighed shedding her coat and pulling off her boots. Her attire was modest but despite Victoria urging her to wear a dress she had chosen a blouse and slacks for this outing. Her unruly hair was bunched in an alligator clip as per usual since she still had difficulty working with it. Entering the kitchen she slung her purse on the counter saying, Yeah, you can say that. Go hug your babies. Victoria smiled filling a kettle. Don't come out until you feel better, or until the kettle whistles. Whichever comes first. Macy rolled her eyes but heeded the advice. Practically tiptoeing she headed to the twins' bedroom where the pair shared a crib. In the beginning she had a pair of cribs and had them sleep separately but quickly realized they slept better near each other. She didn't know if it was because they were twins or if they were simply more comfortable when they were together. She worried at first, concerned it would set problematic precedents but Victoria simply shrugged off such concerns saying, 
do what works. She leaned over the crib gently smoothing Aria's unruly nest of red hair already as curly as her mother's. Macy sighed. She was going to have to learn how to handle such hair in a hurry if she was going to be any help to her baby. Satisfied she moved on to Cadden whose hair was much lighter and shorter. Both were still sound asleep, untroubled by adult issues. Macy smiled looking at them. Her brow furrowed. Soon she'd have to upgrade them to toddler beds. She wondered if they would be able to sleep alone when that time came. A sharp whistle stirred her from her mind's random wandering. With one last look at her babies she stepped back and tiptoed out. Gently closing the door she made her way back to the kitchen. T. Victoria said sliding a mug toward her. It was filled with steaming water with a thin chain hanging over the side. Macy sat on the nearest stool and tugged at the chain before finally pulling it free. On the other end was a metal sphere perforated with small holes. Inside were tea leaves she purchased at her favorite small cafe. Setting the sphere on a dish she sipped from the mug but even it wasn't enough to soothe her. So, what went wrong? Victoria asked sitting across from her with another mug. Tea was not Victoria's favorite drink but at Macy's she never complained. Everything, Macy sighed. Victoria grimaced. Macy sipped from her mug again before she continued, You know, when I told him I had two kids and it didn't scare him off I thought it was promising. But, but he thought that two kids meant I was easy. All night long he kept reaching for me and trying to cop a feel. Victoria rolled her eyes. That wasn't uncommon but for a first date she would have hoped him to have a little more class. Sadly she had her fair share of such characters especially after they learned she sometimes worked as a model for drawing and painting classes. Perhaps that was why she restricted her own dating to women as of late. Is that why you cut your date short? Victoria asked glancing at the clock. It was barely nine o'clock. Yet, yeah, he wanted to take me to a club but I said I had to get home. Then he thought it was an invitation to join me. Macy rolled her eyes. Victoria raised an eyebrow. I told him the kids were already asleep and would be up early the next morning and he said that was fine, he could do it quietly if I could. Victoria almost choked on her tea. She had to admit. That was the first time she heard that line. Macy sighed again sipping her tea. Running the night through her mind again it hadn't been terrible. Granted her date was a little more handsy than she liked but he had been considerate. He opened doors and held her chair for her. They even managed a normal conversation though once he delved into his passion for football she was completely lost. Macy had never been very interested in sports and knew nothing about football teams or players or the FIFA World Cup. Am I being just too sensitive? She suddenly asked. If there is one truth in the world, sweetie, it's that all men are pigs, Victoria said. Why do you think my longest relationships have always been with women? Macy chuckled shaking her head. Her moment of mirth passed quickly and her face fell. She couldn't help but think of the dinners she shared with Julius. Most had been family dinners so they were hardly romantic settings but there were a few they enjoyed just to two of them. He had always been a gentleman holding doors and offering her a seat. He never presumed to order her food for her letting her select whatever she wanted without complaining once about the price and he always offered her dessert without any snide comments about her weight. Their conversations were admittedly stilted and tended toward him complaining about work but that was partially her own fault for asking about his day. Still he always reciprocated by asking about hers. She made it a point to attend art exhibits and loved to take time out by visiting the botanical gardens. No matter where she went she was always seeing how she would compose the picture herself and occasionally took pictures on her phone when she found a particularly interesting scene. Julius never asked to see the photos she took and at times barely seemed to listen but it was fine. 
she could hardly expect him to share her interests. Perhaps it was just like when she listened to someone else talk about sports. Whether he paid attention or not he was never lewd and didn't turn everything into some sort of innuendo. She couldn't help but compare every man she met to him. It had been nearly two years since she left him and he still lingered in her mind. She wondered what he was doing, how his work was going, did he ever think about her the way she thought about him? Tears blurred her vision as she imagined him with someone new. There were dozens of young socialites eager to be by his side so he would have no trouble finding a replacement for her. Was it really so easy for him to forget while his memory lingered in her mind? Macy, Victoria stood quickly coming to her side and wrapping her in a hug. SHH. Sweetie. It's all right. I just feel so stupid, Macy struggled to control her tears. Why? Why do I still have feelings for him? Why does it hurt so much to think of him with someone else? Why can't I forget him? Victoria sighed. Over the years she had had many relationships some longer than others. Not all of them ended amicably and it would be lying to say she hadn't been affected by them. She still held regrets over some of them wishing they could have ended more peacefully. It was said time healed all wounds but that was not entirely true. Time dulled the pain perhaps but deep wounds never truly healed. There was always a scar whether one cared to acknowledge it or not. L'amour say come la guerre, facile ad mirror, difficile a finir, et impossible a adlier. One Victoria said with a sigh. It never ceased to amaze her how naive people were when it came to love. Even the French who had so many quotes and proverbs concerning the darker side of it were not immune to this mentality. Love was often melancholy and lonely. Regrets were surprisingly easy when it came to such strong attachments. It hurt her to think the gentlewoman in front of her had first-hand experience in this matter. If there was anyone who deserved a happy ending it was Macy. Victoria had seen it from the very beginning. Though an adult, Macy had been sheltered from many things. Her heart and love was deep and abiding. One only needed to see how she cared for the twins to see that. Life had not jaded her. She still saw beauty in the world around her. It helped her with her art no doubt but it left her unprotected from tragedy. Just who was this man who had rendered Macy to such a pitiable state? She had never met Julius but she had met Augustus, Macy's father-in-law and grandfather to the twins. He was a typical American as far as Victoria was concerned, arrogant and self-absorbed. But he was also a tender father treating Macy more like a real daughter rather than a woman who had simply married one of his sons. He was also a surprisingly gentle and caring grandfather. The image of the older man tenderly holding his grandchildren after their birth was still clear in her mind. When they had first met Victoria knew him to be a formidable person used to getting his own way but in the presence of his grandchildren he became a puddle of silly faces and baby talk. Victoria certainly couldn't fault him for that. The twins were adorable and it did improve her opinion of the man in general but she couldn't let herself forget the twins' father was his son. Julius Dallaire. Though she never met the man Victoria spent considerable amount of time learning about him. She hadn't told Macy yet but after learning about her ex Victoria had done rather extensive research over the internet and through magazine headlines kept track of his actions since Macy's move to Paris. To be honest Victoria felt a little sorry for him. Though the current situation was all his own making it was clear he was not doing well in Macy's absence. As of yet he hadn't taken a new woman. Most headlines detailed his drinking binges but never once did any mention him in a new relationship. He was clearly a man in pain and perhaps for the first time he was realizing the wonderful woman he had lost. Augustus never mentioned his son in Macy's presence. A fact Victoria was grateful for and elevated her opinion of the man. After all he confessed to her about wanting to reunite his son and Macy together eventually. 
despite his desire he had yet to act on it. Victoria wasn't certain if he was being sensitive to Macy or just afraid of Victoria herself since she originally raised her voice against it. While Augustus bided his time Victoria educated herself about the man who broke her friend's heart and found herself pitying him as much as she pitied Macy. It was becoming clearer to her that the pair was still very much in love with each other and their shared love was only getting stronger in their absence. It wasn't enough to earn Victoria's forgiveness but it did give her hope for Macy's future. The twins were still babies but they were growing quickly. Soon enough they would be talking and inevitably they would ask about their father. Victoria wasn't certain if Macy had considered this. Children were observant and it wouldn't take them long to figure out other children had two parents which would naturally lead them to wonder about their missing father. What's that supposed to mean? Macy finally calmed enough to ask about the proverb she quoted. Only that love is not as easy as some make it seem, Victoria said. It is not a smooth road. It is like country lane full of twists and turns and unexpected views. A smile twitched Macy's mouth, I like that analogy. Good. Well, shall we get on with it then? On with what? Macy asked even as Victoria picked up her phone. I propose pizza and ice cream and a movie, Victoria said. Any favorites? Well, Macy hesitated. Sure. I'll introduce you to my favorite movie. Macy's favorite movie turned out to be a romantic comedy of all things. Such movies weren't typically Victoria's cup of tea. She found most of them insipid and overly simplistic. But she was pleasantly surprised by Macy's choice. As romantic comedies went The Princess Bride didn't follow the standard formula perhaps because it was based on a book. The plot and characters were original even when they were in line with typical fantasy roles. By best-selling books online the book it was based on Victoria later learned was written as a satire of fairy tales and even the whole literary process which certainly explained its unconventional plot. She found it surprisingly entertaining and light-hearted enough to help Macy forget her troubles for the time being. Watching the final scene of the main characters riding off into the sunset, Macy sighed lightly sniffling prompting Victoria to hand her a tissue. Shortly after the movie began Victoria had noticed Macy silently mouthing most of the dialogue, impressive since it was dubbed in French. She wondered if this movie had been one of the reasons why Macy took to learning French so easily. Vicky, you think I'm a fool, don't you? Well, that is out of nowhere. Why would you think that? Because I'm still in love with Julius. It's stupid isn't it? No, sweetie. You told me before you've been in love with him since you were like ten? You don't get over a love like that overnight. Macy sighed, he never loved me. I just feel so stupid for caring so much when he felt nothing. Unrequited love is the most difficult, Victoria agreed but you shouldn't feel stupid or a fool. Love has a mind of its own. I just wish I could get over him. I'm tired of hurting so much. Unfortunately grief of the heart does not heal quickly, Victoria gave her a sympathetic look. But it's been almost two years. Yes, but you have loved this man since you were ten. One does not get over almost fifteen years of love quickly. Macy sighed hugging the pillow she had snuggled with during the movie. When Victoria said it like that it made getting over Julius an insurmountable mountain. Her heart ached with every memory. They had known each other for so long. There wasn't a secret that they didn't know about each other. None of the girls Julius briefly dated knew half of what Macy knew about him but that knowledge hadn't helped. In the end it all fell apart. Try not to think about it too much, Victoria said, and don't worry about. That's easy for you to say. I suppose it is. I wish I could say I have experienced the kind of love you have but no one ever touched me that deeply, Victoria sighed. I envy you. 
I really do. Envy me. Macy blinked. Yes. When you love someone you love them with everything you have. You don't hold back. Whether it is Julius or those two twins sleeping in the other room, you love them with every part of your being. Victoria smiled at her. Isn't that how everyone does it? Oh no, sweetie. The rest of us are far too jaded from a harsh, unforgiving world and disappointed by broken promises. It chips at us little by little forcing us to build walls to protect ourselves. Those walls might protect us from the outside but they also prevent us from giving everything of ourselves to another, Victoria explained with a sad expression. Any time I meet with someone new I never show them all of me. I always hold a little part back. That inherent distrust is always present and quite likely dooms all of my relationships. Macy bit her lip giving her friend a sympathetic gaze. Victoria had never told her this before. Perhaps it wasn't just with romantic relationships that Victoria kept at arm's length. It seemed even friendships were treated with the same self-serving distance. She wondered what could have happened to Victoria to leave her so distrustful of others. Was it really just life chipping away at her or was there perhaps something more to it? Macy wanted to ask but thought better of it. If Victoria maintained her walls for so long it was unlikely Macy could bring them down on a whim. It had taken her friend two years to open up this much who knew how long it would take for her to open up even further. Pushing Victoria now would only bring the walls back up so Macy remained silent grateful she learned this much. Oh, stop with the face, Victoria smiled at her. It's nothing you need to worry about fixing. Macy grew maced. Victoria had already warned her that she didn't have a poker face. Apparently every thought and emotion no matter how fleeting she had was written on her face no matter how much she tried to keep herself reserved. Right. I should worry about fixing myself. You aren't broken, sweetie. You're perfect the way you are. It's the world that is broken. Vicky, just keep loving your babies the way you do. They will learn how to love through you so if you raise them with an open heart then their hearts will also be open, Victoria said. That is how it should be. As for how you feel about their father, try not to think about it too much. You will get over him eventually. And what if I can't? Then you won't. Victoria shrugged. A woman's heart is as deep as the ocean and can hide incredible secrets in its depths. But if your heart truly does not let him go then perhaps it is trying to tell you something. What could that possibly be? I don't know, Victoria shrugged. You'll learn that in time just, don't force yourself or your heart to move on before it's time. Give yourself time to grieve properly and don't worry about it so much. I guess, Victoria watched as Macy stood to get them more tea. She sighed. It was good to see Macy enjoying herself and it was clear motherhood suited her quite well. No two babies had ever been so loved. As the twins grew they would take up more and more of her time and Macy would need the distraction. While her father-in-law was the most prominent man in her life he was hardly the only one making plans. Ever since he first met Macy when she began her schooling Paul Jarvin and had taken quite a fancy to her. In fact he was becoming borderline obsessed with her. Victoria had to caution him several times not to push Macy too much. She was still recovering from a broken heart and needed time to find herself before she entered another relationship. So far Paul adhered to Victoria's warning but he viewed the twins as a new opportunity to prove himself more worthy of her than her ex. Whether Paul cared to admit it or not he had a massive inferiority complex and it colored just about everything he did including his artwork. It was one of the reasons he rarely showed his pieces in exhibits preferring to place them in random locations and natural settings believing this would make their meaning more clear and avoided art critics at all costs. The fact Macy still loved her ex forced him to compete with the phantom of another man. 
Paul constantly struggled to come up with ways to prove himself the better man. With the birth of the twins he now thought to prove what a good father he could be but in truth he was awkward at best. Paul did not have any experience with children or babies. Though he tried to show Macy he was someone she could rely on he often needed help when the twins' cries were not easily soothed and never once did he change a single diaper. Victoria refused to interfere either for or against him. If he could win Macy's heart on his own that was one thing but she wouldn't help him. As much as she liked him she didn't particularly think he and Macy were well suited to each other. In some ways he was stuck in the last century and more than once Victoria had to correct him rather forcefully. Last time they drank together he rather loudly declared a woman's place was in the home and no woman of his was going to be allowed to work. Macy attracted his attention because she was such a soft and caring sort. She was often quiet and reserved in social situations lacking confidence to attract too much attention. No doubt this stirred his desire to be her protector but Macy didn't need protection. She needed support and the occasional push to stand up for herself. Victoria smiled accepted the mug Macy handed her. It had only been two years but she was already showing huge progress in building her confidence. Now that the twins were born her progress was progressing even faster with her mother instincts guiding her to protect them. It was a pity Macy just couldn't see her own strength. If anyone deserved a happy ending worthy of a romantic movie it was her. I have only one wish for you, sweetie, Victoria said as Macy sat back down. Oh? And what is that? 2-1 love is like war, easy to start, difficult to finish, and impossible to forget. 2 I wish for you to be loved madly. Andre Breton 39. The twins make a plan are you ready Cadden? Arya asked bouncing around their room. Yes. He nodded though he remained seated. Tomorrow was their third birthday and their mother was planning a party for them with their Aunt Vicky's help along with Dylan's assistance. To keep the twins out of the way and hide at least some of the preparations so it could be a surprise. Grandpa Gus was coming to take them out and entertain them while the others prepared. But really any time Grandpa Gus paid them a visit it was call for celebration. While they lived in Paris he lived across the ocean in America. It made them sad to think he was so far away. Though they Skyped at least once a week and he always paid visits on their birthdays and during holidays they couldn't help but be dissatisfied they couldn't see him every day. Grandpa Gus was a jolly person. If not for the fact he was clean-shaved they would have easily assumed he was Santa Claus. In fact they were still not completely convinced he was not. After all he always came with presents, he was always laughing and he was a little plump around the middle. So who's to say he wasn't Santa or that Santa kept a beard all year round? On the other hand most Santas they met had fake beards anyway so maybe it was the same with the real one. Where are my little rascals? Grandpere Gus, they squealed as one rushing to their door as it swung open to reveal the man they had been waiting for. Dropping to his knee Augustus embraced the pair in a warm, bear hug nearly falling over backward from the way they fell into him. Macy's entreats to be more cautious fell on three sets of deaf ears. Kissing the tops of their heads he held them at arm's length to get a proper look at his growing grandchildren. He never tired of seeing them. They were almost perfect replicas of their parents aside from eye color with Cadden inheriting their mother's green eyes and Arya their father's grey ones. And every time he saw them it appeared as if they had doubled in size. They were growing up so fast he wished there was a way to preserve this moment more solidly than memory. Macy. Dear, do be good and get a picture of us. I can't believe my grandchildren are three already. But we're not three yet, Cadden protested even as they cuddled up to their grandfather and smiled for the picture. Macy chuckled as Augustus heaved himself to his feet. Though he didn't care to admit it, it was definitely more difficult getting up each time. The twins observed his trouble without alarm. Are you okay? Grandpa Gus. 
Arya asked. Do you need to rest? No my dear. I'm just fine. He smiled. It was just a long flight is all. Besides I don't want to waste a single moment. What do you two think about ice cream? Yet. Yeah. Ice cream. That is all right, isn't it? Augustus looked to Macy for confirmation. As much as he wanted to take the pair out for a special treat he certainly wouldn't go against their mother if she vetoed the idea. Please mommy. Arya and Cadden turned to their mother as well. It's all right with me, Macy laughed. As long as it doesn't ruin your dinner. Yet. Yeah. Let's get out of here before she changes her mind, Augustus leaned close taking each by the hand. Let's go. Ice cream. Ice cream. They skipped to the door quickly rounding up their shoes and jackets. The weather had been fair but it was still chilly to say nothing of the sloppy snow on the streets. Don't forget your hats, Macy joined them fitting both with knit caps. How anyone could eat ice cream when it's this cold outside I just don't understand. I agree, Victoria called from the kitchen shaking her head. All of you are crazy. Bye, bye mommy. Auntie Vicky. Auntie Dylan. Be back soon. Arya waved as their grandfather and his assistant ushered them out the door. Don't let them stay out too long, Dad, Macy warned. I don't want them catching cold. Of course, of course, Augustus nodded. Don't worry. I raised two boys remember. Macy rolled her eyes but didn't argue any further. In truth he raised her as well. Her father had been around for her early years so she thought of Augustus as a doting uncle for most of her childhood. After her father passed away he became more and more like a second father. Though Augustus sometimes gave the impression of being carefree and avant-garde in truth he was actually quite careful. He would never allow the twins' health to be compromised. A rental vehicle waited for them once they reached the street. Stephen held open the door so they could climb in unimpeded. Normally they would have walked and enjoyed some fresh air but it was too cold for that. Augustus chuckled as the twins regaled him with stories of the day. No matter how much or how little time passed since their last meeting they always had a lot to tell him. You know what else? Grandpa Gus. Arya asked. What? Mommy says we'll start kindergarten in the fall. Oh, really? But you're only three. That's just how it works here, Arya shrugged. She says not to worry. We'll have lots of fun and make a whole bunch of friends. Augustus chuckled, Are you excited about starting school, Cadden? I don't know. Cadden shrugged. Augustus considered his grandson carefully. There was something about the boy that made him different from other children though he supposed he shouldn't be surprised by the boy's lackluster attitude. Cadden only started speaking a few weeks ago. Until then he had been mute. It had gotten to the point Macy was desperately worried about him. According to the twins' doctor there was no physical reason for his silence and concluded he would speak when he was ready. They hadn't been wrong. When he decided to speak it had been in clear, full sentences. In fact his first word was, Mommy, more juice, please. It startled Macy so much she called Augustus in tears of joy. Luckily he hadn't been in a meeting so he didn't have to miss a word. Even as he listened though he couldn't help but feel guilty. After all it was a call Julius should have had. Since Macy left Julius had become more despondent. Shortly after the twins were born he had fallen into a depression so deep that even March couldn't drag him out of with a simple shower and coffee. Augustus allowed Julius to take an emergency leave of absence. He just couldn't force his son to work when he knew the problem. Though March was still unaware Julius knew Macy had been pregnant when she left and he also knew the approximate time she would give birth. 
Knowing his depression was due to missing his child's birth Augustus thought it was best to let him be for the time being. Eventually Julius recovered enough to come back to work but every year like clockwork he'd fall back into depression right around the twins' birthday. It was getting harder and harder to keep the truth from his son. Julius's depression and drinking binges would certainly end the moment he learned where Macy had gone and that the twins were safe. Once Julius laid his eyes on his children nothing else would matter. But Augustus couldn't betray Macy like that. She had practically begged him not to tell Julius. Macy was intent on leaving that old life behind and starting fresh. She had chosen Paris as the place to start over and had done magnificently. She had gone back to school, had the twins and gotten her degree. Her next show was coming soon and she was slowly gaining a following with her work. Macy was finding success with her own work and without the Dallaire name overshadowing her. If Julius came back now. No. He couldn't do that to her. She needed a little more time to spread her wings. Once she could truly stand on her own then it would be time to tell Julius the truth. His son would have to hold out until then. Maybe then he would be able to win her heart back. The drive to their favorite cafe was short and they disembarked only to hurry inside. Normally they would have sat outside but the day was just too cold Cadden and Arya stomped their feet on the welcome mat to shake off any lingering slush. Bonjour. Petties, the proprietor greeted. Bonjour, they called together. Augustus chuckled as they took their seats. It amazed him to think his grandkids were naturally bilingual. They spoke French fluently and their English was impeccable with only a slight accent. Jude was taking Spanish in school but he could barely manage a short conversation and it was unlikely he would retain any of it once he was graduated. Was the secret actually living in a foreign country then? Perhaps he should ask March about sending the boy to Spain for a semester. No then all of his grandchildren would be out of the country and he simply couldn't bear the thought of that. Maybe if Jude came up with the idea himself but Augustus wouldn't force the issue. The server, a blonde he had never seen before, took their order and returned with it quickly. Augustus made do with simple coffee while Cadden ordered a sundae and Aria wanted a parfait. Aria's selection was vanilla with chocolate and fudge layers while Cadden had a scoop of vanilla and one of chocolate. The vanilla was actually a yellowish color due to the fact French ice cream used eggs. It was also thicker and creamier, more like a custard. The twins made him try it on several occasions and while they seemed to love it, it was a bit heavy for his taste but that was probably due to the fact he was used to American style ice cream. The twins wasted no time digging into their sweet treat while Augustus watched with a smile. In the end it really didn't matter, Paris or New York, kids were all the same. Grandpa Gus, Arya suddenly said drawing him out of his thoughts. Yes. We think it's time you told us about our daddy. Augustus sat mouth open. Arya sat on her knees as she lingered over her parfait intently staring at him. Beside her Cadden was also closely watching him. There was something uncanny about the boy's gaze. It was almost as if he was quietly working out a complicated math problem that would solve the puzzle in front of them. What do you mean? Grandpa, we know you're not mommy's daddy so that means you're our daddy's daddy. Right. Augustus cleared his throat. We think it's time you told us about him. Have you asked your mother about this? We can't ask mommy, Arya shook her head. Mommy still misses him a whole bunch and we don't want to make her sad by talking about him. That's why we're asking you. How do you know your mommy misses your daddy? Because we hear her crying herself to sleep sometimes. Well maybe, Grandpa, you're stalling, Cadden suddenly said. Augustus sighed looking at his grandson. Usually Arya did most of the talking but when Cadden spoke he made sure to make to most out of every word he said. He glanced at Stephen who stood nearby fighting a smile. 
Of course he should have realized this day was coming. The twins were too smart for their own good and picked up on things quite readily. It was just like how they shut down their mother's friend Paul. Though Paul had been around since the twins were born they hadn't grown as close to him as one might expect. They called him uncle and kept him at a distance. Augustus was secretly grateful for that. Ever since he met the young man at the hospital after the twins were born Augustus realized Paul had a crush on Macy. Given that he still had hope of bringing Julius and Macy back together Paul was an unwanted interloper and possible obstacle. At the same time he couldn't interfere with Macy if she decided to see him. Victoria made it clear whether or not Paul could win Macy's heart was up to him and Augustus was not allowed to meddle. Though Augustus was a multi-billionaire business owner there was something about Victoria that made him want to stay on her good side and not aggravate her. As of now Macy seemed blissfully unaware of Paul's affection and showed no interest in him beyond a good friend. If the kids had shown him a lot of attention Macy might have been more inclined to see Paul in another way but thankfully the kids hadn't grown needlessly close to him. What do you want to know? Augustus finally said. We'll start with his name, Arya diplomatically said. Julius. Julius. Arya tried to pronounce the unfamiliar name. Julius. Julius Dallaire. He's my youngest. You have more children. I have two. March is his older brother. So we have an uncle too. Arya smiled looking more excited. That's right. March is married and he has a son of his own. So you have an aunt and a cousin as well. Arya clapped happily. This was far more exciting than she first thought it would be. Cadden didn't share her enthusiasm but he grinned at the news. Do they all live with you in America? That's right. Arya frowned sharing a serious look with her brother before she asked, Grandpa, why do all of you live in America but we live in Paris with Mommy? Why doesn't our daddy at least live with us? Does he not like Paris? No. That's not it. Then, does he not like us? No. He loves you both, or he will once he sees you. Our daddy doesn't know about us. Cadden asked. Yes well, you see. Before you were born your mommy and daddy had a fight. Your daddy did a very stupid thing and your mommy decided to leave. That's when she came to Paris and went back to school and had you too. But daddy doesn't know that. No. He doesn't. But he has been looking for your mommy. Why? My guess is he wants to say he was sorry and make it up to your mommy. Do you think he wants to be our daddy? Oh yes. He definitely wants to your daddy. Arya frowned again looking to her brother. He shrugged but said nothing. Quietly the pair finished their ice cream treats deep in thought but they didn't ask any more questions. Augustus wondered what was going through their minds but he hesitated to ask. It wasn't the first time the twins' uncanny intelligence surprised him. So I hear your mommy has another show coming up, Augustus said after a moment. Yep, in Amsterdam, Arya said. Mommy is taking us with her. She says she'll buy us wooden shoes. Augustus chuckled. Now they sounded more like normal three-year-olds. But deep down he knew it was all an act. There was nothing normal about his grandchildren though he wasn't certain exactly what was going on in their minds. Cadden. Arya asked looking across the room to her brother's bed. After ice cream with their grandpa they had asked a few more questions about their family and he even showed them some pictures he had on his phone. While it was exciting to see their family it only made it more clear how much distance separated them. Their cousin was actually quite a bit older than they were. In their experience older kids didn't really care about younger ones but maybe that wasn't true if they were family. After discussing their family Augustus made them promise not to talk about it to their mother. 
Their grandpa was convinced she wouldn't like that he told them so much about their waiting family. The twins readily agreed since they didn't want to make their mommy cry. Katan. No answer. You know Katan, you should talk more. It made mommy really worried when you didn't talk for so long. Uncle Paul kept saying you needed to be tested or something. No answer. Katan, are you asleep? No what do you think about what Grandpa said today? About our daddy? Well, yeah, day. Hmm. If our daddy is like Grandpa Gus then he has to be really nice don't you think? No answer. And we have an uncle and an aunt and a cousin too. That's really exciting. So what do you think? Maybe they won't like us. You heard Grandpa Gus. He said they will love us. Grandpa Gus loves us so they will too. That isn't really how it works. It will work out this time. They are our family after all. But they've never met us and they don't even know we exist. But they will. You heard Grandpa. He wants to get Mommy and Daddy back together. Yeah but it didn't sound like he had a plan. Then, we'll make a plan. Arya suddenly sat up in bed. Cadden rolled over to look at her as she slipped out of bed and bound across the room to come to his side. Her eyes sparkled bright the way they usually did when she was scheming. Cadden looked at her in silence and waited for her to announce her big idea. We'll make a plan that will bring Mommy and Daddy back together again. Then we can be a big happy family again. Cadden frowned. What if our daddy doesn't want to be in a family with us? Of course he will, Arya said supremely confident as she always was. You want a daddy don't you Cadden? Yeah. I do. Well, we have a daddy out there. We just have to meet him. That can be part of our plan. Actually part one should be letting daddy know we even exist. Grandpa Gus said Mommy left before she told him she was going to have a baby remember. Okay, okay. So part one, we show Daddy we exist. Part two is we get to know him. That way we can be sure he's the kind of person we want to be our Daddy. What do you think? I guess that sounds good. Cadden finally sat up. But it isn't just our decision. We will have to ask Mommy somehow. She might not think it's a good idea. Mommy's been missing Daddy for a long time. She's definitely going to agree. Cadden gave his sister a dubious look. Grown UPS seldom did the things they expected them to. In fact usually the things grown UPS did defied explanation. He had a hard time trying to understand their logic for the decisions they made. Like why did their mother decide to move to Paris just to get away from their father only to miss him every night? Wouldn't it have been better to stay closer so they could talk about whatever separated them in the first place? Still, it would be nice to have a daddy. Whenever they went to one of their mother's shows she and Arya spent a lot of time matching clothes and having fun shopping. It would be nice if he could do that too. He wouldn't even mind wearing a suit if it meant he could match his daddy. But still. There had to be a reason their mommy and daddy weren't together and he doubted they would be willing to get back together so easily, especially their mother. After all she left home to come all the way to Paris. There had to be a reason she did that. At the very least their daddy would probably have to apologize before their mother gave him another chance. We should make sure Daddy apologizes, Cadden finally says. Mommy will probably be more willing to agree if he did that. Himaria sighed. There really was no reason to fight her brother on that point. When Cadden got an idea in his head he seldom just let it go. Fine. Part 1, We Show Daddy We Are Here. 2 We Spend Time With Him So He Can Get To Know Us. That way he will have a reason to really make it up to mommy if he wants to keep seeing us. 3. We let mommy and daddy talk and make up. Cadden nodded. 
It sounded okay. At least it sounded doable but he wasn't certain it would be enough to bring their family together. He bit his lip, do you think that will be enough? Arya frowned. Her brother had a point. Anyone could say they are sorry and just walk away. They had to make it so their daddy wouldn't walk away. They had to show him and their mommy that being a family was better than not being a family. Aloud she said, Part 1 We show ourselves to daddy. Part 2 We spend time with him so we can all get to know each other. Part 3 We make mommy and daddy have a proper talk. Part 4 We show them that being a family is best. Part 5, Daddy Proposes Cadden nodded. That seemed like a logical plan. But for any of it to work they had to get to America, or their daddy had to come to Paris. He wasn't sure how they would do that but their grandpa said he wanted to bring their parents back together so perhaps they could rely on him for that part. In any case they had a plan. 40. Movie night Julius poured melted butter over the bowl of steaming popcorn before lightly shaking salt over it all. It might have been quicker to pop it all in the microwave but that popcorn lacked a certain flavor. Air popping it and mixing it like this was how he remembered doing it when he was a kid and it brought back the movie nights they used to enjoy when he was little. Hurry up, Daddy. Arya called impatiently from the living room. She and her brother had been excited when he brought up the idea of movie night. It seemed Macy hadn't instituted any special nights like that to entertain them. When they wanted to play a game they had game night, when they wanted to watch a movie they had movie night. When he first arrived in Paris he went along with it. After all he didn't have anything scheduled and no work to do. Instead he filled his days spending time with his babies and wife. They naturally saw fit to give him a proper tour and even introduced him to their favorite street performer. He didn't mind playing tourist. But things were different now. As soon as he started setting up the new office calls came in and he was suddenly very busy. It didn't take long for the twins to start chaffing with the idea of sharing their parents' attention. They were especially distressed with sharing their father they only just met themselves. That was when he suggested official movie and game nights making it easier to ensure they had plenty of time together. He didn't think the twins would be very interested in it but they immediately embraced it. Chuckling he set down the salt and carried the two bowls out of the kitchen. Their new apartment was not all that different from their previous one. Like the old one the kitchen, dining room and living room were part of an open concept with no clear delineation from one to the next. Unlike the old apartment their new one had three bedrooms. The third bedroom had been prepared to function as the baby's nursery. At first Julius considered getting a house or an even larger space so all three kids would have their own rooms but Macy thought the expense too high and the twins loudly declared they wanted to share their room. For now, it was all right. Depending on the gender of the baby they could change to rooms as it grew up. If a boy the baby and Cadden could eventually share a room, if a girl then Arya would be sharing a room. But he was getting ahead of himself. It was still a good two weeks before the baby would be born and there was plenty to do. Monday he had his meeting with Herr Leon about his new business proposal. He had only just finished setting up their foreign offices and already they were being inundated with calls. It seemed the Dallaire reputation preceded him or perhaps it was Leon's doing. Leon was a respected businessman all across Europe so having him introduce Julius to some colleagues opened doors that would have otherwise remained closed. Not that he really had to worry about work. If he wanted to he could easily retire and live the rest of his life comfortably even while raising three kids. In fact when he first moved to Paris to be with Macy and the kids he treated it as something of an extended holiday. For weeks he leisurely toured the city with Macy or just the twins if she had a previous engagement. Though on the surface it appeared as if he was just having fun he was familiarizing himself with his new home. Learning the language took longer but it gave him ample time to spend with the twins as well as reconnect to Macy. 
They had been apart for six years and he wanted to make up for every single minute not just with her but the twins who had never met him. If not for the fact his father told them about him they wouldn't have even known his name. The thought soured Julius's mood. It wasn't that he was ungrateful toward his father. If not for Augustus's intervention it is difficult to say what might have happened to Macy and the kids. But while he took care of Macy he never once told Julius the truth. Even knowing how desperately Julius was searching for her Augustus remained silent. And not just silent, he actively hid her and helped her slip out of the country underneath Julius's nose. Julius couldn't help but feel betrayed. His children were five years old before he even laid eyes on them all because of his father. At the same time his father had been seeing them regularly. Augustus had been there for their birth and made trips to see them on their birthdays and holidays in addition to speaking to them through video calls. While his father was having fun with his children Julius had been snared by the worst kind of harpy, one that had almost destroyed his last chance with Macy. If he had only known a little sooner it would have saved so much trouble down the line. In reality though, he had no one to blame but himself. When he first married Macy he still considered her a friend of the family. He had numerous relationships with a variety of girls and women all of whom were obsessed with his wealth. None of them loved him. To say he was disillusioned with the idea of love was putting it mildly. When Augustus proposed he marry Macy Julius had been against it. After all she was like a cousin, almost a sister, with how close they had been growing up. On the other hand she was safe. She had grown up alongside him and his brother and was like family. Her only connection to high society was the Delaires themselves. She didn't have allies or ulterior motives. Macy was loyal to his family and wouldn't connive behind his back or so he thought. So he agreed to the marriage. It never occurred to him she would genuinely be in love with him or that she had been for some time. Perhaps if he looked more closely he might have realized the truth sooner. Their wedding was a formal affair but not overly extravagant. He figured it was because his father didn't want to overdo it since it was an arranged marriage of sorts but now he knew it was due to Macy's influence. After seeing how she planned their vow renewal ceremony it was clear she had a way of controlling Augustus no one else could. There was no telling how many of his ideas she shot down to ensure their nuptials were tasteful and practical. Not even Rose had such a success when it came to holding the reins on the Delaire patriarch. Paging through their wedding album Macy was the epitome of the blushing bride with a gentle, bright smile. It was clear their wedding was a day she had been longing and waiting for a long time. How could he have been so blind? The early years of their marriage he recalled were awkward. While he had previous relationships Macy hadn't had a single one. Their wedding night in particular had required some careful coaxing to even get her to join him in the bed. He'd had a few too many drinks greatly lowering his own inhibitions. In fact it was fair to say he was more than a bit horny. The memories were dim but he remembered he had still been careful with her and made certain she enjoyed their first time together as well as every time that followed after. Macy had no problem taking on domestic chores while he went back to work. He recalled both his father and brother were surprised to see him at work the very next day. At the time he hadn't thought anything about it, after all their union was out of convenience not love. Still it was strange they hadn't gone anywhere or had a proper honeymoon. Now that he thought about it there had actually been a few rumors concerning their marriage because he had gone back to work so soon. It seemed a lot of people took that as a sign it wasn't going to last long or that it had all been for show. After marrying him he would have expected Macy to be invited to a number of high-class events as a way to strengthen ties to the Delaires and secure their support but she hadn't. In fact Macy didn't attend any event Rose was not also a part of and he was fairly certain only Rose received a proper invitation. Did that mean no one believed Macy was a proper Delaire in the first place? 
Macy didn't complain and he wasn't interested in needless parties anyway so he couldn't be bothered by it. Though he did recall March complaining once or twice asking him if he didn't care people were being so disrespectful to his wife. Julius brushed it off saying if it didn't bother her then it wasn't worth worrying about. But maybe it had bothered her. Macy was smart. She had to know she was being snubbed and yet she said nothing despite the fact she was a Delaire. One word from her and the entire family would have boycotted events hosted by those people. In fact maybe Augustus had done just that. Thinking back he did recalling walking in on a conversation between his father and a business associate concerning a gala of some sort. The details of the event were lost to him but Julius quite clearly remembered his father saying, I don't think I will be going. If my dear daughter isn't welcome then there is no point in showing my face. After that Macy started receiving proper invitations at least to some events. He wasn't sure when the rumors of her cheating on him started. They always attended events together and Macy didn't know anyone there aside from his family so she never wandered far from Rose, March, or himself. But somewhere along the way people started calling her shameless for hanging on to his family to improve her station. Then someone started a rumor she was actually flirting with other men who promised to buy her favors. Having known so many women like that in his past it was enough to enrage him. Instead of asking her about the rumors he simply turned his back on her. Was it the overwhelming sense of betrayal that someone he deemed a close friend would do that to him or the idea his entire family had been duped? He wasn't sure which stung more but it led to him drinking more and ignoring her any time she tried to talk to him not that she tried often. Macy had always been so full of life and laughter when they were kids. But not long after the rumors started she became pale and quiet. Perhaps the rumors weighed heavier on her than he had thought. It was like she was being eaten up on the inside by them. No doubt she hadn't wanted to burden him with her problems but he was her husband. Who would support her if not for him? James Goodwell The world's most shameless flirt and the worst example of chauvinistic male to ever exist. The only thing longer than his list of failed businesses was his list of conquests. In fact he seemed to take a woman's wedding band as a personal challenge to seduce them giving no thought to how it ruined them afterwards. He knew better than to challenge March and never targeted Rose for his sick games. But with the rumors swirling around Macy and Julius's own inaction he no doubt smelled blood in the water. It was a rare opportunity to get one over on a Delaire so targeting Macy was definitely not an accident. As far as Julius knew Macy had never been hit on before and thinking back to that night he could picture the pair quite clearly. James stood too close leering as he took stock of her. Macy had always been gorgeous and possessed a natural beauty that certainly earned her jealous glares from other women. She never bothered with diets and she had no interest in unattainable beauty standards. For her beauty was accepting one's natural body type and hers was tantalizing curvy a fact he realized as James grasped her hand and slobbered all over it. Macy's usual gentle expression turned to revulsion in an instant and she jerked her hand away from him in disgust. Her face flushed with embarrassment and rage and she might have been ready to give him a piece of her mind if Julius hadn't suddenly appeared. He should have just hit the bastard but in his anger he had been blind to Macy's indignation. Instead of pummeling her solicitor like he should have he dragged her away and, he hit her. Julius froze mid-step as the memory came flooding back. He had actually raised his hand against her. Cold suddenly assailed him and he felt himself go pale. How could he have done that? What was wrong with him? Daddy, Arya called. Daddy, what's wrong? Arya and Cadden were camped out on the floor in front of the TV waiting for their popcorn. The Netflix movie of their choice was already queued up and just needed them to select play for it to begin but they had been told they couldn't until everyone was ready. Macy and her large belly were seated on the couch behind them. Julius insisted she sit and relax while he got their snacks in order. 
he had already brought them drinks. The twins' colas sat on a pair of coasters with straws tucked in the glasses. They were allowed them on the promise they would be careful not to spill. Seeing Arya's worried gaze Macy shifted looking over her shoulder to see Julius frozen midstep and pale as a ghost. Julius? Macy asked. Julius, what is wrong? Her voice stirred him from his stupor. His blank gaze drifted to hers and he let the memory slip away. Julius licked his lips wanting to say something to put them both at ease but found himself without a voice. What could he say to her after he had been so stupid? Julius, are you okay? Macy asked again her face betraying her worry. She shifted forward as if to rise but he didn't want her getting up and possibly straining herself so close to her due date. He forced a smile, I'm fine. It's nothing. Clearing his throat he completed his delivery setting the larger bowl on the floor between the twins where they could share it. Then he sat on the couch with the smaller bowl. Without a word Macy shifted to lean against him. He raised his arm and hugged her close as they settled together. She sighed reclining against him and bringing her feet up so she could lie more comfortably. Tugging on her afghan throw she covered her swollen, aching feet. Despite his care and regular massages her feet remained a constant problem. They always ached no matter how much she kept off of them. On top of that they always seemed cold. Sometimes at night he was woken up from a dead sleep when she tucked her feet up against him trying to warm up. It was like a bucket of ice water was suddenly thrown on him. Once she was comfortable he slowly relaxed and nodded to Cadden who held the remote. Without a word Cadden pressed play and the beginning credits began to dramatic music before settling on snail racing fan. The kids were already snickering as they reached for their popcorn. Julius sighed setting his popcorn bowl on his lap within Macy's easy reach. So are you going to tell me what is wrong? Macy whispered. What do you mean? Julius asked feigning ignorance. I'm talking about how you were doing your best impression of a statue. Did I? You looked like you saw a ghost, Macy insisted. So what happened? I was just, remembering. Remembering what? The night you left. Macy tensed. She looked at him wide-eyed and uncertain. Surely she couldn't have forgotten. There was no way she could have forgotten what happened, what he did. Macy I, Julius hesitated. What could he say? I should have broken James's jaw for even speaking to you. Instead I, Macy I, God I'm so sorry, SHH, Macy shushed him placing her fingers to his lips. It's okay. Macy, how could you possibly forgive me after what I did, Macy I? Macy gave him an exasperated look before pulling back her blanket. She grasped his hand and pulled it to her swelled belly. Scrunching her brow she repositioned it and held it in place. A moment later he felt a shock run through his hand and up his arm as the baby kicked. Julius held his breath and waited. A second passed and he felt another kick. Macy sighed and looked at him again her face warm and her eyes bright. Do you know what that is, Julius? she asked. That's your baby telling you to stop worrying about the past. If you want to worry about something, worry about the future, because you're going to be a daddy. Julius sucked in his breath staring into her shining green eyes. He wondered if all women glowed like her when they were going to be mothers or if the phenomenon was unique to Macy. One thing he was certain of, None could be more beautiful than her. A smile softened his expression as he tugged the blanket back up to cover her. You're amazing. I know. Macy smiled and he couldn't resist kissing her. He'd never get tired of how her lips tasted or how soft and pliable they were against his. Julius pulled away with a sigh. His pants were already feeling uncomfortably tight. When was the last time they had spent a passionate night together? He couldn't recall. 
It had to be at least three or four months, sometime before she started her last trimester. Since Macy was only carrying one baby this time the doctor okayed intercourse for as long as they were both comfortable with it. Frankly Julius had been relieved. After so long apart his drive was rather high and he wasn't ready to abstain from indulging. He craved her, wanted to taste her, pleasure her and touch every inch of her. Macy was surprisingly receptive. He thought she would be hesitant after the pregnancy was confirmed. Much to his surprise her drive seemed to increase as it progressed. Not that he was going to complain about her lowered inhibitions but it was almost too much even for his starved libido. When her stomach began to really show her drive finally calmed and he almost breathed a sigh of relief. But now the weeks of only heavy petting and passionate kisses felt more like teasing knowing she was content to cuddle and sleep. Knowing he was going to regret it later Julius leaned close to her again kissing her deeply. God, did she have to taste so good? Daddy, Mommy, you're missing the movie with all your kissy facing, Arya complained. Macy pulled away in mock horror and looked at her, Arya. Julius cleared his throat as Cadden also turned to look at them with a questioning gaze. Without a word Julius held up his hand and twirled his finger in a sign the young pair should turn around and pay attention to the snails on screen as they harvested tomatoes and tried to avoid crows. Snickering Arya and Cadden obeyed looking again to the screen. Julius sighed as Macy chuckled snuggling against him. So this is what fatherhood was like. For years he endured Frederick Lamb basting parenthood like it was a disease, the end to all fun and games. But this, was good. Julius kissed the top of Macy's head as he gazed at the six-year-olds. No. This was just about perfect. Feeling better. Macy whispered. Yeah. I do. Julius rested his cheek on her head. This feels really good. Good. Because we're glad you're here and we don't want you disappearing. I'm not going anywhere Macy. I promise. You'll never have to do anything by yourself again. Good. She sighed. Does that mean you'll rub my feet tonight? Julius chuckled, of course, baby. You don't even have to ask. I'll always be here for you. 41. Baby makes five Macy stirred. It was late. A glance at the clock confirmed it was one o'clock. She sighed wondering what had woken her. Turning she thought to ask Julius if he was awake as well only to find his side of the bed empty. Startled she sat up. Was that why she had woken? She took careful stock of the room. Nothing seemed out of place. Even the baby monitor remained on the bedside, green light quietly blinking. But something felt wrong. It was too quiet. There should be some sounds coming through the monitor as the baby moved around but it was completely silent. Shivering with apprehension she stood and quickly pulled on a robe. Stepping out of the bedroom she paused finding a warm light glowing from the kitchen. Seated on the couch and relying on this light was Julius. He sat cradling a small bundle noisily suckling from a bottle. Caught off guard Macy stood memorizing the scene in her mind as she leaned on the doorway. This was a sight she never thought she'd see, a sight she sometimes dreamed of seeing when the twins were little. It hadn't been easy when the twins were babies. Despite Victoria's help there was still many times she had been on her own. While Cadden usually remained quiet through the night Aria was quite loud. There were nights she simply wouldn't settle and Macy woke up on the couch with the baby in her arms after she had fallen asleep trying to nurse the hungry infant. Arya would often be quietly looking up at her as if waiting for her mother to waken before fussing again. No sooner would Macy succeed in getting Arya to sleep again in the early morning hours than Cadden would stir and demand attention from his mother. She would change him and bring him into the living room to feed him and hopefully allow Arya to stay sleeping for a little while longer. 
It was a constant juggling act that left Macy sometimes falling asleep at the table or even in the middle of her online classes her college allowed her to take to keep up with her studies. Victoria helped where she could but she also had classes. There were several days Macy was simply on her own with two babies demanding her attention. More than once she had broken down. Macy what is wrong? Victoria exclaimed as she entered the apartment. Two crying infants lay on the floor on blankets with their mother seated in front of them in tears. Taking in the situation is a moment Victoria disappeared into the bathroom to run a steaming bath. When she returned to the living room she pulled Macy to her feet and shoved her into the bath. With the mother taken care of she gathered up the loudest of the infants, Arya, taking care of her first. Changing the infant and feeding her Victoria quickly put the baby to bed before repeating the procedure with the other. Once the pair was contentedly napping Victoria settled in the kitchen to wait for Macy to emerge again. Macy stepped out of the bathroom in a robe her hair heavy and damp. For the moment her hair was fairly straight but that would only last as long as it was wet. As it dried her natural curls would return. Here. Victoria said sliding a cup of steeping tea toward her. Macy grimaced but sat down and lingered over it. She had fallen asleep while soaking in the tub but it hadn't been restful as she listened to Victoria quickly and efficiently take care of the twins. As hard as she tried it seemed she simply couldn't be the mother she wanted to be. Macy, look at me. With a sigh she looked up to see Victoria staring at her intently. Despite how intense her look was it was still kind and more than a little worried. Macy wasn't sure what she should say to alleviate her friend's concern. Macy, you are a good mom. You are a great, fantastic, awesome mom. Vicky. Say it. What? Say it Macy. Say you are a good mom. Macy sighed. Say it. I am a good mom. You are a great, fantastic, awesome mom. Vicky, say it. I am a great, fantastic, awesome mom. Good. Now keep saying it. Vicky, I mean it Macy. Do you think it's easy to do what you are doing? You're going to college. You have not one but two babies. They are adorable and perfect but they outnumber you. Do you think that is easy? Macy hesitated. I mean one would be hard enough, but you have two. Two babies that need your constant attention. Two babies that need you to feed and change them and hold them and love them. Two babies who keep you up at all hours and you're here alone, taking care of them by yourself. Do you honestly think anyone else could do what you are doing right now? But you handled them so easily right now. Yeah, I also got a full night's sleep and just came from the cafe where I had a leisurely lunch, Victoria said. Macy, I could never do what you are doing. One baby would break me. I'd need a team of nannies to help me. Macy didn't answer. Look. I know we've talked about this before and you don't want to do it, but I really think you need to hire an au pair. Vicky, Macy look at me. I'm worried about you. Sweetie you need to sleep. You can't keep stretching yourself this thin anymore. I won't allow it. I'll go over your head if I have to. What is that supposed to mean? I'm going to call your father-in-law. You wouldn't. I do. I thought you didn't like him. He's a man and he's been in charge so long he's forgotten he can't bend the universe to his will. But what he can do is hire an au pair for you, Victoria said. I've seen enough to know he really does care about you and wants the best for you and the kids. And that is fine. He can foot the bill for an au pair too. Macy shook her head. Macy. It's not a sin to rely on other people. You don't have to do everything on your own. Look you can get someone part-time at least so you can actually rest. 
It's okay to be selfish and take care of yourself too. Let me and your father-in-law help. You can't keep going on like this. How much sleep did you get last night? Macy breathed deep. In truth she didn't remember, maybe an hour between nightly feedings. Deep down she knew it wasn't enough. Perhaps Victoria was right and she was pushing herself too hard. Augustus told her to call him for anything. Well. Okay. I'll talk to Dad about possibly getting an au pair, but only part-time so I can focus on my classes a little. I need to catch up on the work. Fine. Good. Victoria breathed a sigh of relief. That's all I ask. Victoria would take her victories where she could with someone as stubborn as Macy. She didn't want to upset her friends so she held back what she really wanted to say. They had spent many nights talking about Macy's one-sided love so Victoria knew all there was about her friend's past but she wasn't satisfied. Love or not, marriage or divorce, he should at least be helping her take care of the children they had brought into the world if nothing else. Yet Macy was insistent not to involve him. He didn't know she was pregnant when she left so there was no need to drag him into it now. Victoria had been keeping tabs on Macy's ex. While Macy insisted he probably moved on with his life with another woman Victoria saw no evidence of that. He was certainly a drinker but there was no sign of a new woman. Augustus expressed his desire to bring the two back together. After what Macy went through Victoria couldn't agree no matter what the old man said but at the same time it was not hard to see Julius wasn't moving on either. Macy claimed her love was one-sided and he never cared for her but that isn't what Victoria saw. It was clear her leaving had a devastating effect on the man she claimed never loved her. Perhaps it was her French sensibilities at play but Victoria was certain Julius not only cared about Macy but, in fact, loved her. If only she could meet the man then she would know for sure and until she was sure Victoria would never suggest Macy get back with her ex. Still, he should take responsibility for the kids he helped to bring into the world. For now Victoria would settle on Macy hiring an au pair. With help she could get some rest and focus on her own health in addition to the babies. If Macy was nervous about hiring someone Victoria would be right there to help her sort through the applications. Together they would find someone they both could trust. Macy smiled at the scene in front of her now. How different it was from when she had the twins. Juggling toddlers in addition to a baby certainly wasn't easy but she also wasn't alone. Julius was intent on doing his part not that it didn't come with difficulties. Watching him change a poopy diaper for the first time was video worthy and Victoria lamented on missing the opportunity. One whiff of the diaper had the poor man gagging to the point of doubling over much to the twins' amusement. Macy herself could barely contain her laughter as he first tried to change the diaper using tongs and his nose stuffed with cotton. Even now she could recall his protests. God, Macy. I can taste it. Why can't I taste it? Will you stop laughing? It's not funny. What the hell did this kid eat? Milk as I recall, Macy finally managed to speak. And I believe you complained how jealous you were the entire time you watched me feed him. Julia's face suddenly reddened though she didn't know if it was from embarrassment or lack of oxygen. He clenched his jaw trying to keep his composure but she wasn't about to let him off the hook so easily. What goes in has to come out, you know. Macy, he looked at her with desperation. Can you, oh no daddy. I had to change two diapers at the same time for two years. I'm sure you can handle one. Mention of her struggle to care for the twins without him steeled his resolve. Turning back to the squirming infant in front of him he set aside the tongs and took the process in front of him seriously. Following Macy's instruction and with no small amount of gagging he managed to remove the dirty diaper and clean the infant's bum. 
As he slipped on the new diaper the baby decided it had to pee suddenly becoming a fountain. What the? Julius jerked back in surprise. Oh, that happens. Macy said. What? What do you mean? That happens all the time with boys, Macy explained. Maybe it's the sensation of being changed or just a reaction to the cool air. Who knows? You just get used to it. You just get used to it. Julius repeated looked at her with horror. Come on, Daddy. Go ahead and finish. Toss that diaper and get a fresh one. The twins watched the spectacle thinking it was hilarious and told the whole story to their aunts. Both Victoria and Rose agreed it was the funniest thing they had ever heard and both said she should have filmed it. Macy stifled a chuckle as she crossed the room and reached the exhausted dad in front of her. She ran her fingers through his hair gently stirring him awake. Julius sighed looking up at her, Macy, what time is it? Still the middle of the night, she said, what are you doing out here? Coda started fussing, he answered looking down at the content baby in his arms. Since the bottle was nearly empty he removed it and lifted the baby up to burp him. The baby's burp came out like a hiss of air. Coda stared up at his father with eerily calm, grey eyes. For the most part he was a quiet baby. He watched the world with large, wondering gaze as if contemplating how it all worked. Naturally he was far too young to have such complex thoughts but Macy certainly saw some similarities between Coda and his older brother. Cadden had been a calm baby as well. Even at a few weeks old he already seemed to have a grasp of his family. Though Coda fussed when strangers held him he was completely comfortable in his parents' arms. He didn't seem to have a preference between his mother and father though he clearly preferred them over others. That didn't surprise Macy in the least. Cadden had always preferred being held by his mother. In fact he would start fussing almost immediately when other people held him. He had been okay with Victoria and eventually warmed up to Dylan but he fussed continuously when Paul tried to hold him. For some reason he was okay with Augustus despite the fact his grandfather's infrequent visits. Coda was a little more gregarious having no issue being held by multiple people including Victoria, Dylan, Augustus, March, Rose, and even Jude. Paul was an infrequent visitor so perhaps the baby's reaction to him was less than favorable. Though Macy recalled Paul had been a little awkward with Cadden and Arya in the beginning as well it was strange he didn't come around more often. She wondered if he was uncomfortable with their growing family circle. With the twins their only family relation had been Augustus but this time everyone had flown to Paris to see the baby. Paul only maintained a small circle of friends and sometimes even avoided his own show openings making Macy wonder if he just didn't like large crowds. Even so she hoped he would come around more often. She would hate for Coda to grow up not knowing his adoptive uncle. So, you got up with him? Macy asked. Yeah, of course. You were sleeping so well I didn't want him to wake you up, Julius nodded. You work too hard. You should take a break now that he's here. Macy smiled leaning close and kissing him. His lips eagerly answered her making her wonder when it was they had last made love. She had been too uncomfortable in the later stages of her pregnancy for such activities and after the birth she was tired and needed healing but now. Macy. Julius asked as their lips parted. Has anyone told you how hot you look playing daddy? Julius raised a brow before his gaze widened. His face flushed with anticipation no doubt doing the mental math himself for when they last coupled. He swallowed hard saying, Macy, you should put the baby back to bed, Macy said standing. I'll be waiting for you, daddy. She walked back to the bedroom hearing his soft mutter, Shit. Coda, do your daddy a favor and go to sleep, little man. Macy snickered to herself as she softly closed the door and slipped back into bed. 
It was still warm and she found herself nodding off rather quickly. She didn't hear him when he returned to join her but his arms circled around her and pulled her against him. You better not be asleep, Macy, Julius said with a rather gruff voice. Though she was still drowsy she couldn't help but laugh at the desperation in his voice, does that mean you've been having a hard time? Damn it Macy, you really shouldn't use the word hard in a sentence right now, he buried his face in her neck and sucking on her sensitive skin. The stubble on his chin tickled and she laughed at his enthusiasm, poor daddy, so neglected. And what are you going to do about it, he challenged raising his head to meet her gaze. Well, she ran her fingers through his hair eliciting a groan, isn't that supposed to be my question? Who carried your baby for nine months? Macy, he leaned forward his mouth hungrily enveloping hers. His hand caressed her slipping between her thighs and pressing against her entrance. I'm going to make you regret teasing me. Really, she shifted her hips grinding against his hand. Are you going to make it worth my while? Smiling he leaned close, as you wish. His fingers plunged into her as he swallowed her accompanying moan. She wasn't expecting her to come so quickly but she clenched around his fingers as her body suddenly convulsed. J. Julius, she moaned breathlessly. We're only getting started, he whispered close to her ear. You have no idea the things I've been dreaming about doing to you. Show me, Macy's hips pressed against him as she came down from her first wave of euphoria. Show me everything. Julius chuckled, glad to know I wasn't the only one suffering. Patience, babe. We have all night, plenty of time. He trailed kisses down her neck to her partially exposed chest. Her pajamas of choice were a silky, short black bit of lingerie that wasn't particularly revealing but drove him wild nonetheless. Uh-huh, Macy moaned. Julius almost growled as he pulled away to be rid of it himself. Almost immediately the baby monitor suddenly came to life with a single baby cry. They froze in their passionate embrace looking over at it as Coda continued to whimper as if talking to himself. Julius held his breath willing the baby back to sleep. Please, little man, back to sleep. Just this once for your daddy. Please. As if hearing his father's silent plead the baby quieted and obediently fell back to sleep. Thank God, Julius praised before silencing Macy's laughter with a kiss. Are you ready for this? Hmm. Macy sighed feeling his hard member pressing against her entrance. You do realize this is how we got three kids in the first place? Julius groaned. Were women more fertile just after they had a child? He wasn't sure but he ached with holding himself back. His gaze settled on hers as he said, then we'll buy a house. Macy snickered but her mirth was quickly replaced with a moan as he pushed himself into her. After that there was no room for critical thinking. 42. Time marches on Paul's side as he stepped out of the car and adjusted his tie. He was late. The gala was set to begin at 5 and it was already approaching 6. Even so there was still plenty of time left. He breathed on his hand and sniffed before digging out a breath mint. There hadn't been time to brush his teeth and he had a few drinks to steal his nerves. This was not going to be easy. Since the baby's birth he avoided Macy and the kids feigning work. It wasn't a complete lie. He did actually have a couple installations to complete. In the past he always hurried back to Paris after his work was done. Now he lingered in whatever city or country he found himself in usually in a depressed, occasionally drunken stupor. If Macy thought his sudden absence strange Victoria was good enough to cover for him. So far it had worked though he missed the kids and Macy. As much as he longed to spend some time with them he knew if he did he would have to see him too. Julius Dallaire. He was practically everything Paul despised about the human race. Julius was born to riches. 
He had never known a time of hardship and flaunted his wealth with expensive cars and tastes. Women fawned over him and men were jealous of him. Julius Dallaire could have anything he wanted whenever he wanted never mind if his actions hurt someone else. Somehow this man captured Macy's heart. She gave everything to this man without thought to the consequences and she paid the price. Julius betrayed her trust and broke her heart. But she was strong and left him before he could do more damage. Yet despite learning her lesson the hard way she still loved the man who hurt her. He managed to win her back and she remained at his side even now and cementing them together were not one or two but three kids. He still didn't know why Cadden and Arya were so accepting of a father they had never known. Julius had been absent from their lives for five years and yet they welcomed him with open arms. They clung to him and proudly declared him to be their father to anyone who asked. After their first confrontation Paul had done some research and uncovered Julius's drinking binges and public indiscretions. He waited expecting Julius to reveal his true colors again ready to step in to protect Macy and the kids but remarkably Julius seemed to have much more self-control. Though he was known to be a drinker Paul never saw him have more than one or two glasses of wine and never once did Julius appear out of control. It seemed he was staying on his best behavior in front of the twins. When he first moved to Paris Julius had not been in a hurry to look for work choosing to spend as much time with Macy and the kids as he could to make up for the years they lost. Paul might have called him a freeloader if not for the incredible wealth he possessed. In truth Julius never needed to work so treating his time in Paris as an extended holiday was only natural. Instead of returning to America Julius remained in Paris ready to start a new branch of his family's company. Paul thought it was a joke and was ready to laugh once Julius's attempt failed as so many others did. Yet he hadn't failed. Incredibly Julius's gamble paid off and his company was rapidly climbing the business hierarchy. It was almost more than Paul could stand but the hardest part to tolerate was Macy's happiness. It was clear she was overjoyed to have Julius in her life again. When she learned she was pregnant again she was so excited she practically glowed. Knowing the challenges she faced with her first pregnancy Paul expected Julius to fail to support her. After all the man had no experience with a pregnancy or the difficulty it placed on the mother. But once again Julius surprised him. Not only did Julius remain steadfastly by her side he was ready to answer any of her requests. He took over much of the cooking and cleaning duties so she could relax. When her feet hurt and began to swell he was there to rub them without complaint. If she needed a nap he took the kids out so she could sleep in peace. Though his business was getting busier he made time for her and the kids instituting game and movie nights to ensure they were all together. Even Victoria was impressed at how Julius juggled home and work. When the baby came Julius continued to prove himself. He not only helped manage the twins which would have certainly been enough, he also helped with the baby. Julius took turns getting up for late night feedings and incredibly even changed diapers. Granted he had to wear a mask but he changed them nonetheless. Just a few weeks ago Macy sent an excited text. Coda said his first word, Dada. Showing his invitation Paul stepped into the well-lit venue. Macy's latest work hung from the rafters in floating frames rather than on temporary walls. It presented her photography in a more dynamic fashion and kept the space open. Her latest series was entitled Baby Days. Macy was always inspired by real life so it was no surprise to him that the ten photographs centered around the new baby. Paul quietly wandered the gallery looking at the mostly black and white photographs featuring building blocks, stuffed animals even a mobile all taken from a low angle representing the perspective of the baby. Each photograph had one color that was highlighted out of the otherwise grey tones. He didn't know if it was because the baby was a boy but the color for each photograph was the same, blue. It added a contrast to the grey tones and also softened the images giving them more life than if they had been left purely black and white. 
he studied the photos with a smile. Macy had a unique way of making the mundane sacred. It was what made her work so special and why so many people gravitated to her photographs. Uncle Paul, an excited voice greeted. He turned to see Arya and Cadden nearby. Arya was wearing a blue, velvet dress with a white skirt. Her usually unruly hair was tamed in a pair of pigtails with sparkling butterfly barrettes. Beside her Cadden, incredibly, was wearing a suit with a small bow tie and boutonniere matching the rich color of his sister's dress. Cadden always hated suits and restrictive clothing but now he wore them at every formal function without complaint. Hello there wee ones. You missed Coda's birthday, Arya's face suddenly scrunched together. Ah, yes. I did. I apologize for that, Paul smiled. I was in the middle of a large project and couldn't leave it. Well, okay. Arya sighed. But don't do that again. Mommy was sad you missed it. I'll be sure to remember that. Paul nodded. In truth he deliberately postponed the completion of the installation to ensure he wouldn't be able to attend the birthday. It might have been childish and more than a little cowardly but he just couldn't bring himself to attend knowing he would have to face Julius again. Paul, I'm so glad you came. He looked up to see Macy approach. Without hesitation she gave him a welcoming hug. For a moment he indulged in her embrace. He knew her attention was completely plutonic but he couldn't help wishing there was more between them. Stepping back he admired her dark blue gown. It had a satin finish and hugged her curves. After she had the twins Macy often complained about the effect it had on her body and for a long time afterwards would only wear baggy clothes. But now she had a new confidence in her body even after giving birth to Coda and she had a lot to be confident about. She looked stunning. Whenever he saw her she took his breath away and this time was no different. Macy was practically glowing her expression was so bright and at ease. Her hair was tamed in a thick French braid and a topaz necklace graced her neck. She had never been one for jewels and he had a sneaky suspicion who purchased such an extravagant ornament. I could hardly stay away. Your work is always awe-inspiring. Well, thank you, Macy lightly blushed at the compliment. Daddy, we're over here. Arya called. The others turned to greet the newcomer as Paul's expression hardened. He clenched his jaw to brace himself for this confrontation. Mentally prepared he watched his rival approach. Unsurprising Julius wore a finely tailored suit that matched the one Cadden wore. In his arms he carried the one-year-old Coda. The baby wore a white shirt with blue vest and pants that matched the color theme the rest of the family adhered to for the night. Unlike his brother who had always fought against wearing restrictive clothing Coda seemed comfortable in his party clothes. How was it? Macy asked as Julius reached them. Just wet this time, Julius said with obvious relief. It was clear he still had a hard time with poopy diapers though he never refused to change them. Such a good boy, Macy cooed caressing the baby's pudgy cheeks eliciting giggles. Mum. Coda said as he chewed on his binky. Paul wasn't sure if the baby meant to say mom or if it was the consequence of babbling with his plug in his mouth. It was adorably sweet in either case. Julius chuckled kissing the baby's temple. Despite the baby's shockingly bright, red hair there was no doubting his parentage. In fact he was almost a perfect copy of Cadden and was sure to look just like their father as he grew up to say nothing of his clear, grey eyes. Coda clung to the hem of his father's suit with his pudgy fingers as he gazed around the crowded room but remarkably showed no fear. Paul, Julius greeted him with a simple acknowledgement. Julius, Paul echoed the greeting. As far as he knew Julius never spoke a word about their first confrontation when they first met in New York. Paul was grateful for his discretion but also irritated by it. Julius's words from that night still rang in his mind. 
She has always been mine, and always will be. That's right. Julius and Macy had known each other since they were children. She developed a crush and fallen in love with him when they were still just kids. They married at the behest of his father but Julius fell in love with her of his own accord. Now that he acknowledged and embraced his feelings Macy was indeed his. Tenderly kissing the infant Macy caressed Julius's cheek and kissed him. It was only a small kiss but the feelings behind it were far more passionate. No matter where they were Macy always had a special smile for Julius that was given to no one else. Paul swallowed down his jealousy. This was Macy's big night and he wouldn't ruin it. No. This time he would be a good friend even if he wanted more. That was the way it had to be. The End Join our Facebook and WhatsApp group for more updates, link is given in description, rest audio book will be continued in next episode.